First tonight to e-cigarettes. Sales of e-cigarettes grew in Ireland by nearly 500% last year. And while they certainly can help smokers give up, very little is known about their long-term safety. And many believe that what they're really doing is re-glamorising smoking. So should we be concerned about this rapid surge in popularity? Katrina Devereaux has this report. Just when we're getting to grips with changing people's attitude towards smoking, along comes the e-cigarette. But could this device be making the smoking habit fashionable again? Many people in addiction medicine think that nicotine addiction is harder to beat than crack cocaine and heroin addiction. I think it's amazing that another addictive product was allowed to be introduced with no controls. Standard consumer law applies to e-cigarettes, but currently there is no law preventing the sale of e-cigarettes to children, and there are no laws covering the marketing of e-cigarettes, which means the advertisers are having a field day. Pure satisfaction for smokers. I want you to switch. We're all adults here. It's time we take our freedom back. Tell me about the marketing and advertising of e-cigarettes. Well, at the moment, it is a very grey area. And the Advertising Standards Association of Ireland, they don't have any regulations, so they don't really know whether these e-cigarettes constitute tobacco-based products or medicinal products. The ads bear no resemblance to anything that suggests it's a functional product, that it is to be used as a smoking cessation device. And instead, they really do hark back to the ads that we saw in the 50s and 60s, which glamorised the act of smoking, made it look as if it was about empowerment for women and masculinity for men. And it does trouble me that we're seeing the same pattern of socialisation and normalisation around smoking as we did um, in the past. And how powerful is it to see that with somebody, it doesn't matter what's between their fingers, but something between their fingers being smoked? We're renormalising cigarette smoking and the act of smoking for a whole new generation who have never been exposed to the type of advertising that the tobacco companies engage in. If it becomes normalised, if it becomes socially acceptable, it's very difficult to eradicate that effect. Currently, e-cigarettes must adhere to general and consumer product safety rules and plans to control them more tightly are underway. E-cigarettes are banned by some organisations such as Irish Rail, Dublin Bus and the HSE, but businesses like the Vaping Lounge in Bray welcome customers who want to enjoy their e-cigarettes indoors. I was smoking at least 30 a day. From the day I started with the e-cigarettes, never touched a cigarette after. That's fantastic. And how do you use it? There's battery in it, and you press this little thing here mm -hmm. and take the ball. <laughs> and the little, oh, and little vapour, yeah. it's a vapour comes out of it. I see the positive side of it. I have four or five friends who have given up cigarettes to save money. They look healthier. Well, you get a lot of vapour. Yeah, I like that though. It's nice. I mean, if my cholesterol can come down with just a few weeks of using what it is, so be it. So just what is in an e-cigarette? So this is your physical battery. So it's a lithium ion battery. It takes four hours to charge, will last about eight hours of use. It's got a little heating element inside. So it heats up the liquid, turns it into a vapour. And tell me about the liquids, because that's what's giving you your nicotine is the liquid. Exactly. We do 113 different flavours. Tobacco flavour, apple, tutti frutti, absinthe, sex on the beach, strawberry, banana. Then we've got And lots. why would you have a strawberry or banana flavoured liquid? Because some people go off the tobacco flavours once their taste buds come back. A lot of people think that they're there for the, the kids to entice them. It's not. It's because once your taste buds come back, the tobacco flavours are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Manufacturers and satisfied customers say that this nicotine vapour offers many advantages over traditional cigarette smoke. But regulatory agencies and some health experts aren't sure. E-cigarettes are, are very attractive for obvious reasons because, I mean, it seems intuitive that they must be less unhealthy than the stinky, smoky, real cigarettes. And, of course, many, many real smokers are, are desperate for a way to get off the weed. And with that, I have the greatest of sympathy. But the tobacco, the, the smoke, uh, the paper, the leaves, all that is merely the vehicle for the nicotine. And it's the nicotine which is the key agent of addiction. So by using another means of delivering the key agent of addiction, you know, you have to wonder, are, are we really doing the right thing? There's a proposal for bans for under 18s by the end of the year. What do you think of those? I think that's probably a, a, a good idea because the evidence is coming in very slowly and that suggests that e-cigarettes promote real smoking. It cannot, in my opinion, have a good effect on 
the reduction in prevalence of smoking. There's no way that you can see e-cigarettes as promoting a tobacco-free society. As far as I'm concerned, the biggest indicator is the attitude of the tobacco industry. They're buying them up wholesale. They are investing their money heavily in e-cigarettes. It is incredible that they are doing this so that they will destroy their own industry. Could you say that they see the writing on the wall and that tobacco is coming to an end and that this is their next money-making machine? They would like us to think that. I think that's implausible. Well, I'm joined now by Catherine Devlin, the president of ACETA, that's the E-Cigarettes Trade Association. Catherine, thank you very much indeed for coming into us thank today. Um, first off, the fundamental problem is they're not just a form of nicotine replacement. They are very, very similar to smoking. I mean, you've seen the ads that we've just seen in the report there, that they're, they're glamorous, they're sexy, it's the whole hand mouth movement. They're doing an awful lot more than replacing nicotine. They're re-glamorising smoking. Now, it's very important to note that they're not a nicotine replacement therapy, they're not medicinal products, they're very much a consumer like-for-like -like alternative to smoking, which is why the more like smoking they are, the better, because the more easy it is then for a smoker to make the switch. It's extremely easy for a smoker to stop smoking and use an e-cigarette instead because it feels very similar. So that whole hand-to-mouth thing and the feeling of taking in the vapour and blowing it out again, it does mean that there needs to be a lot of responsibility surrounding the advertising and marketing of these products, absolutely, and we do want to see that they're not being targeted at children. I hope that the Irish ASA, Advertising Standards Authority, will actually take the lead from the UK one that's recently done a public consultation and is bringing forth some guidelines that are sector-specific for the e-cig industry so that we can market these things responsibly and avoid targeting children. So you would actually celebrate the fact that your e-cigarettes are, are so similar to, to cigarettes. Absolutely. That's, that's a good point. Absolutely, because it's going to help us to get, gain those absolute vital public health gains that we should and could get from these. Do you think that, you know, with the research that is saying that some younger people are beginning to smoke e-cigarettes when they've never smoked real cigarettes, is this just a price we have to pay, do you think? I don't think so. I think we should have a mandated age restriction, which we've been asking for for a long time. They should not be sold to under 18s. These are not for children, they're for adult smokers. Um, but equally, you know, children are going to experiment. They do already experiment with real cigarettes, and that's a real issue. Uh, the reality is some kids are just going to try things that they're not allowed. You're saying that your members should market responsibly, but at the very same time, they are selling nicotine labelled as tutti frutti flavour, banana flavour. These are flavours you associate with children's sweets. Yes and no. I mean, there are adults who like bananas, there are adults who like tutti frutti there sweets. There are very few products that are marketed to adults labelled as tutti frutti flavour. I mean, you have to admit no, that that is a childlike flavour. Do but, you consider that responsible? Yeah, I, do. I think it's vitally important for adult smokers to be able to find a product that they can switch to that can get them right away I think you're from wanting my the point flavour here. of tobacco. I'm saying that if they're selling something labelled as being tutti frutti, you'd have to suspect that actually they're targeting children with that product. I disagree. I think it's, it's more important that there is the surrounding responsibility and the guidelines and the, the regulations in place to make sure that the children cannot be targeted with these products and can't be sold them. Can I ask you about the, the safety concerns here that, you know, as you admit, nicotine is a poison, that there have been um, an increase in the numbers of children who have been referred for having gotten a hold of these e-cigarettes and uh, have suffered nicotine poisoning. Is that something of concern to you? Of course it's a concern. I mean, if any one family is suffering in that, in that way, it's, it's not good. And for that one family, statistics are no consolation whatsoever. But in the context of massively increased availability of the products, massive increased uptake of the products being used by everybody, it's to be expected, unfortunately, that this will happen. But there is very good, robust regulation in place about the packaging and the labelling of the products. They are required already under the existing regulations to be supplied in child-proof packaging. They're required to have labelling that very clearly states that this has got to be stored locked up, what the level of nicotine is that's in there. That must be tested to ensure that the correct level is in there. There's all sorts of restrictions and, and requirements surrounding the labelling that would inform consumers about the needs to, to be responsible with it and behave with it carefully, much as you would with household bleach, oven cleaner, those things that we wouldn't be feeding our children either. Okay, well, Catherine Devlin, thank you very much. Thank you.